Good afternoon. Um, the first presentation uh, that we are having today is the taxonomy of crystal skull in algae. Belongs to the other coral analysis to the division Rhodophyta, associated with the Hawaiian uh, coral reefs. I want to point out the close relationship that historically has been uh, documented between the coral in algae and the corals in relation to recruitment, competition, and many ecological aspects. Um, <coughs> One of the things that we need to keep in mind is that this coralline algae belongs to a, a um, algae group, the Rhodophyta. They have a red pigment, pigments uh, in the chloroplast, in the, in the chloroplast, and um, they will typically grow better in the shade areas than in the um, more illuminated areas. Um, they are impregnated with calcium carbonate in the cell walls, and the molecule of the calcium carbonate is a uh, calcite, but it's very similar to the human bones, and there are a lot of research related with the use of this calcium carbonate in relation to the human health. Uh, this particular group of seaweeds is uh, worldwide distributed, from rocky shores to rhodolith beds. I'm going to show you what a rhodolith bed looks like in the next picture, but this uh, is now true. We have been uh, recording from pole to pole coral algae. They can cover up 100% of the available surface, and when any ecological community in the near shore will have some kind of a disturbance, coronary algae, among other groups, will get and uh, cover more the space. And as I say, they are very common from the poles to the tropics. Uh, we can find them from intertidal zones, from the mid intertidal, lower intertidal, down to 170, 280 meters. And uh, they provide a habitat, refuge, and grazing areas for numerous fish and invertebrates. And you will see a lot of them uh, associated with uh, invertebrates in Hawaii as well. In Baja California, it's very typically that the abalone recruitment system will be heavily linked with the uh, species composition of Caroline algae, who are just uh, encrusting uh, growth from here. Um, they have a very wide variety of forms from uh, a, a, a true parasite, Corinema sureti is the name, uh, very common epiphyte over the seagrass leaves or other algae, other algae. As I was describing, uh, free living rollets is one of the uh, ecological forms. And uh, along the surveys I've been doing with the DRI people like, uh, who kindly bring me to the spots and they know there are a lot of these kind of beds along the Hawaiian coast. Also talking with Heather, she has been finding them uh, frequently in deep water as well. Uh, coral in algae and coral reefs has a long history, a long common history who came from the early days of classification. Uh, around the 1700s, 1800s, people start to think about how uh, the living things in the earth can be split apart, and there were a lot of debate about uh, what should be called a plant, what should be called an animal, what should be called an, a mineral. And the corals and coral algae were start together at that point, and many of the spe species or genetic names for both groups came from, uh, back from that side. Uh, probably this is one of the best examples in uh, scientific history, how humans were interpreting plants and animals and they split apart them. Uh, there is a strong evidence of close the specific relationship with coral recruitment. In the Caribbean, in Mexican Caribbean, I, I am developing a project with colleagues uh, from Colegio La Frontera Sur working on this species of uh, Siderasta, which is uh, recruiting heavily on this neogonelitum coralline algae. And uh, this is in the endangered species list of Mexico. Suggestion about coral overgrowing by during bleaching has no scientific evidence yet whatsoever, and is part of the uh, common, uh, common knowledge that is coming out of the uh, coral reef ecology papers that coral in algae may cause uh, the killing of the bleaching coral, but there's no hard data on that matter too. Based on most people have a general perception that uh, non-geniculate or crystal coral in algae are too difficult to work with. Historically, they have been ignored despite the abundance and the wide distribution. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, the taxonomic nightmare of the coral lanes is true. And this, but this man is uh, historically man-made. 
because between 1895 and, and uh, 1911, over 100, 550 species have been described, and some of the authors from that age, they were changing the name of a single taxon twice within the same publication. So the nightmare, the taxonomic nightmare, came from a not very professional way that people were doing taxonomy at the early age. So we, not, we need to sort out the mess, and to sort out the mess, we have to use the type material. We have to link names with type, original type material from different collections. Uh, fortunately, I have to say that there are several regions of the world, especially into the Atlantic, in the Pacific area, who has been uh, historically working since the 60s and not doing their uh, knowledge of taxonomy of uh, coral algae since then to, since then to uh, our date. Um, more recently, uh, the Indonesia region, the New Zealand region, the Gulf of California region have been upgraded uh, their taxonomic concepts. Now we are starting uh, this project on the Hawaiian um, islands, I think will uh, lead to the better knowledge of the coast, but also uh, a lot more of uh, new species and new things that we will come out of this project. Um, we have to be very careful because there are two different forms of coral in algae. There are uh, like kind of erect geniculate, and the geniculate means they have no calcium carbonate at some segments in the phthalate, and this phthalate became more uh, flexible and will be more resistant to waves. The non-geniculate are the ones who will grow over the surface, but also form in branches, but all of them calcify. The, growth form, the variability in growth forms is huge, and even a single species can have all different growth forms all linked with a, a specific name. Also, we have to be aware that this has a three-phasic three life cycle, and in the part of the life cycle is an sporophytic, and part is gametophytic. And there are a lot of features like a multiple conceptacles. The conceptacles are the reproductive sporangial structures, unipolate and calcify sori, like we are seeing here. And those kind of features will be very useful for identification, not only in the laboratory, but also in the field, in the surface view like this one or like this one. Um, how the morphological variability can be understand and classify? Well, we have to go back to the historically valuable collections that you have in Bishop Museum, at least. We have to do extensive modern collections and also upgrading uh, diving systems. That's a typical Mexican system. <laughs> 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 We're still using that for field trips. <laughs> and also, uh, we have to do sectioning just to have a very good uh, view of the internal structure to tell people how the structures are inside because here is where you found most of the features that will lead you to the genus or species names. Uh, particularly to the genus level, we will use uh, the presence of cell fusions, secondary pits, or both, it can be both in a phthalate, the form of the epithelial cells, which can be flatted or flatted or, or rounded, uh, the form of a subepithelial cell, like elongated or short, and as well as the growth from like a monomeric, a single group of filaments growing, or uh, dimeric, two different filaments growing. And into the more specific level, we will use um, what is called the, the reproductive structure, mostly the, the tetrasporangial uh, plants, the sporangial plants, in where the presence of a soli will let us know the family level, and then the presence of this capsule, uh, this little uh, cover around the tetraspore, will let us know the genus 